Sunday, I get sent out on a trouble call for customer. All services are down. Internet's down. TV's down. Phone is down. Everything's gone out. So I get there dealing with an angry customer that's yelling at me about how long they had to stay on the phone to try to get the order booked and how they are going to be billed and the whole bit. And I show up there and the ONT is like dead. So I swap it out, replace it, and now we're going to see what went wrong with it. Why did it fail? I had a trouble call the other day. The internet was down. The TV was down. The home phone was down. So I go out to the job and um, this is what I found. I found the Nokia ONT was kind of shot. See, normally when the ONT, if it's not getting light from the fiber which goes in there, normally you'll have a fail light and nothing else. Normally when these are operating, you've got a data light and a network. A network and a management light, and if the phone's in use, the pot lights, POTS light comes on. But nothing. This one here, all it has is just a very weak power light. No fail, no nothing, but no data. I looked on the back of it, and well, you can see that all the data ports are lit up. Now, normally that's not the case. Normally data one, because that's the one that we use. This one goes to the router. This one's lit up. These are dead. This unit is DOA. I wonder if it's trying to send any light out. Let's just check this with the night shot. Are we seeing any attempt of this thing to fire any light? I don't think so. Let's take it apart and see what we can see why it went dead. Now, I'm not obviously not going to fix something like this. This is going into the recycle bin, but I thought maybe we'll take it apart and show you guys what's in it before it goes to the recycle bin. Maybe we can see why it failed. Now, where it was installed, so you can see where the screws are. I guess there's one screw over. Oh, that's a ground screw. Where are all the screws to open this up? They must be under these, these little feet. Um, where this was installed, it was installed in a, like a shed outside the house. I'm wondering if maybe moisture got into it. That's what we're going to look for. It, 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 it's not like it was wet, right? It wasn't like it was a, a, uh, a shed that was exposed to the elements, but it wasn't, uh, you know, and it didn't appear to be wet, and it wasn't like it was mounted onto the siding. It was mounted onto a stud, and there was other electrical stuff in there, but I'm just curious as to whether maybe it got leaked on, and maybe that's why it went dead. So that's what we're going to find out. We're going to pull this apart and see if there's any evidence that moisture got into this unit before I toss it in the recycle bin. Now, one thing I did do before swapping this out is I did change the power adapter just in case the power adapter was at fault. But the power adapter was fine. So then I changed this out for a new unit and all the services came back. So we know the fault is definitely in the ONT. So that should I think, separate the top cover. I actually had somebody hand me one of these back once that they'd taken apart themselves and destroyed it in the process. They got a big bill. These things are worth quite a bit of money. And because they took it apart, well, let's just say they had to they had to replace it. I don't think they were very happy when they got the bill. So the moral to that story is don't take apart equipment that belongs to the phone company. This may have been wet. Look at the top here. It looks like we may find, I can just see some crap on here. I'm just wondering whether water damp got in there. And if that's the case, the new one I replaced will probably blow up shortly too. And then we'll figure it out that, uh, ah, that uh, it was caused by water ingress. Is there any more screws? I don't think so. This should just pop apart. This is warning, do not open. Really? Ah, I never heed those warnings. I wonder how this comes apart. This top cover should just pop off here if I can get a, a place to pry. There we go. Oh, there's clips on here, that's why. All right.
All right, there's the unit itself. Can't remember what way it was hanging. This was hanging like this. This was the top side where it was mounted. It was mounted in his closet, and it was it was that way. So this was the top side. So if there's any damage caused by a water ingress, I would expect to see it on the top, and that is precisely what we see. Take a look at this. This is why this ONT died. There's evidence that water dripped in here and shorted it out. And there's evidence on the bottom side that there's water that's gotten in here and shorted this out. So I wonder if there's, uh, it's, it's, I'm sure there's components that are damaged. I don't think that just cleaning this off is going to get this thing to uh, to try to boot up again. I guess I could um, I guess I could try cleaning it and just see. You can see right down here too these resistors. They are all indicating that there's been water on here. I guess what I can do is I can just try cleaning this off with a with some alcohol and just see if it will will turn try to attempt to boot up anyway. Uh, if it boots up and I get the fail light, at least then we're further ahead than we were, even though this unit is not going to get put back in service. It's going to be thrown into the recycle bin just because it did fail in the field. We'll try cleaning the board up here with some isopropyl alcohol. And the other side down here. This is the power supply here. There's going to be um, buck converters, I'm sure. Here, I don't think it would be boost, but there certainly would be buck converters. This is the laser, obviously. And basically, this just plugs in. It just has a regular type connector on the end. That plugs in. The fiber plugs into that. And this goes into the the optical side of things. We'll just clean this off here too because there's still corrosion in here. I'm just curious as to whether it's going to boot after I clean this up. I doubt it, but won't know until we try, right? I'm sure one of these chips is probably toast. Okay, let's just power it up again. Maybe we can get some smoke out of this thing. Okay, it's on. I see the power light. It's very weak. That should be a lot stronger than that. All the lights are lit up on the back. sign of water. It looks like, looks like water got into this jack here too, the telephone jack for where the home phone is. Look at the, like down in here. I'll just throw some light in there. It looks like that, looks like that shorted out too. You see? Looks like water's gotten in there. What I probably should do is I should probably uh, get a hold of the customer and let him know that, yeah, water got into the unit and that's why it went down and that maybe he might want to uh, cover it up put some plastic or something over top of it to keep moisture from getting into it again because sure as hell if it blew up once he's gonna blow another one up and the next time I won't be replacing it for free that's for sure if I get a call back there and I gotta go back there because water's gotten into the thing I can just see the guy's gonna be oh well, you guys installed it I didn't install it somebody did
I'm gonna throw my meter on here and just see if there's any sh quick shorts. You know what would be might not be a bad thing is I'll bring out the thermal camera and we'll power it up and see if anything gets hot. You can do that. Let me grab my my little thermal camera meter. Handy, I think it's sitting right here. I'll just use that one. Little, little camera, uh, thermal thermal imaging meter. It's easier to grab if the battery's charged than my other one. Okay, we'll turn that on. And uh, let's get the power plugged in and not turned on yet. All right, let's uh, see if this thing gets hot when I turn it on. I'm seeing a reflection of heat from something on here already. Something's getting hot down here. That chip's getting hot. Oh, this, I see more heat. That looks like there's heat there. That's just a reflection. Definitely heat on this processor. But I don't see anything else that's uh, other than this is the bottom of the processor there. Turn it off. There's a couple regulators down here. Nothing really is standing out. There's that chip on the other side that's getting hot. You can see that's the heat sink for it. That's getting real hot. Right there. I figured I'd have some fun with my visual fault locator. My other one, the one that I reviewed last week, is in my work truck. So I can't show that. But I figured I'd put this one on. And we see nothing. Unless I bend the cable, right? If I bend it, we see it. And this I thought was a fairly bright, I thought this one was a fairly bright optical fault locator. Not as bright as my other one, nowhere near as bright. My other one, I'll show you some pictures from that. I took them on my work phone when I was dealing with a a fiber that was broken yesterday. All right, if I turn out the lights and here you can see that there's nothing really showing up here unless I give it a bend, you know, then we'll we'll see the uh, the, the light. By comparison, there is uh, that other one. <laughs> it is ridiculous how bright this one is. Like that's in a closet, but it's still got light in it. It's not dark. You can actually see where somebody used a staple to hold the fiber against the wall. This is also not the same fiber. This is a thicker. This is like a three millimeter. This is a one millimeter down here. This is a this is a clear curve. And as you can see, it just it shows right up on the on the coil first of all of it, but it shows up to give you an idea. Also, I took some pictures in the. Uh, in the telephone room so the lights are all on but here's the end of the fiber showing the fiber is good we had a bad splitter on this one and um, and there's the fiber hitting the wall that's coming that's that's what's projected out of the end of the fiber that's how bright it is I mean this thing's like a flashlight 
we had a bad a bad splitter you can actually see the red light leaking around the inside of the splitter because obviously the fiber was broken inside there and off the optical splitter there <laughs> it's so bright it's plugged into this one but it's broken someone pushed one of these connectors got broken off and it got actually pushed inside and I guess when it broke off and got pushed inside it snapped the fiber and uh, all I could see was just a bright red glow when I looked at the splitter it's like oh um, I think we got a bad splitter this little one would never would never show up like that and I thought this was pretty bright but this one that I, I demoed the other day it says it will you can trace 10 kilometers of fiber yeah um, it's so bright I can believe it because just to show you guys for a comparison between the two of them this one here you don't see it until I actually put a sharper bend and then you can see it and speaking of sharper bend this is how people would tap fiber right we say, well, fiber can't be tapped well it can they put a bend in it like that and then the information that's in the fiber can actually be detected that's how they, they do it. They actually put a little kink in it. And what will happen is when you kink your fiber, the information that's going through the fiber will, will fly out. It'll fly straight out. Of course, that will attenuate everything else. If I, if I show you here, if I put a bend in it here, you'll see the other one gets weaker. You see that? So if I got this, put a bend in it here, so you can see the light if I bend it here the other one gets weaker I'm attenuating it that's why the bend radius is critical on fiber if you coil it up too tight you won't get any light on the other end and if you go really too tight you'll actually snap the fiber itself and then there'll be no light getting anywhere anyway I figured I would just go over that but this one here as you remember if you remember the other one when I tested it, how bright it was on the desk compared to this one. I thought this one was pretty bright, but uh, the other one is much brighter. Anyway, um, nothing really to do on this. I just wanted to kind of show it off and see why it failed. And now we know why it failed. And um, I'll say thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.